Good evening, black people. Good evening, Good evening friends of black people. All right, Africans in the house. Okay, so we're gonna do another piece and then we're gonna exit the stage. But before we go any further, I like to say Kwabuna and the collective, you know? But these people are my my folks in the community, you know what I mean? So we wanna big them up. Right here, we have Sister Debbie. Give it up for Sister Debbie. And then we have a young brother over here, my son, Temba. Give it up for Temba. And then we have another young brother over there, Brother Bert. Give it up for Brother Bert. Okay, so you know how it is as a people. Anything that's important, we mark it with the drum because the drum is an important part of the fabric of our culture. So tonight on this Dudley Laws fundraiser scholarship, there is no more important occasion than this one to have the drums out in full force. So I want you not just to be spectators. So the next piece that we're gonna do, get up off your feet. I want you to move, it's a little livelier. You can just stay right there by your table. Uh, make sure you move what Mother Africa gave to you because if you don't move it, you will lose it. You understand what I'm saying? So uh, make sure you do that. And then for the three um, honoree, the three people that we're honoring tonight, I hope I, it's Brother Oliver there, Sister Nancy, and Brother Kingsley. Okay, stay put. All right.
Guabina and the African Drummers Collective, ladies and gentlemen. Incredible. Reminding you that, of course, all proceeds from this evening's event go to the annual Dudley Laws Fundraising Scholarship, right? Helping amazing youth within that community to do amazing things. Uh, right now, as well, a reminder that uh, raffle tickets on sale, one for five dollars, three for ten dollars. And uh, what is being raffled, one of the raffle items I have here is a silver a uh, bull of a watch uh, worth about $600. So you could take home, anybody has a birthday coming up? Any married people in the building? Make some noise, married people. Your hands up if you're married. All right. All right, let me try this again. Happily married people, hands in the air. You see how more hands it up? She was like, you better put your hand up. You heard what he said, happily. You'll we'll be sleeping on the couch for the next week. <laughs> yeah, reminding you that, uh, again, raffle tickets, one for five dollars, three for ten dollars. And that, of course, um, all proceeds go into the scholarship program. Amazing youth. It's such a blessing to be able to uh, uh, hang out and to fellowship with amazing people for an amazing cause. And uh, as we continue to reflect, um, and celebrate. I'm going to invite to the podium at this time the principal and longtime friend and principal of the Afrocentric Alternative School, Mr. Luther Brown. Give him a round of applause, please. Greetings, how are you? Well, I'm on. When I just don't eat. And uh, I want to ask it again. How are you? That's way better, way better. Listen, I am delighted and honored to be here. Partly because one of our students will be receiving special recognition from Bad C. And we want to say thanks to Bad C for doing that. Another reason that I'm happy to be here and proud to be here is that the Afrocentric Alternative School came about because of your revolution. Dudley Laws leads a revolution. And not everybody in this room was active in making sure that the Afrocentric School materialized because some of you weren't around here at the time. Now I'm going to ask that all of you lend your support to this cause, the cause of educating black children in this society in a way that is caring, in a way that recognizes them as full human beings, in a way that encourages them to become the best that they can be. So I want to say something to you. There is absolutely no way that the school by itself can do it. And we all come from a space that says the community is useful in helping to form individuals. And no matter if you come from Africa or Canada or wherever, it doesn't matter your socially ascribed race. We're all in this thing together. There's one word. And if we mess it up, we mess it up. So I'm asking you to support the Afrocentric Alternative School in a number of ways. You can volunteer or, okay, let's rephrase that. You can volunteer and you can come and join us here on the 15th of June for our fundraising gala. Oh, yeah. the date again? June 15th. Show hands if you're going to be here. June 15th, the Afrocentric Alternative School Annual Gala. I have to big up Miss Vando Hyman. She sang earlier tonight, or earlier this evening, this morning, today. Uh, the Black National Anthem, one of the most powerful voices that we have in the city. Give her a round of applause.
is the first person to lead the Afrocentric Alternative School. And she led it through a lot of struggles. So what we do today is stepping on the foundation that was laid by her and everyone else who've gone in between. Anyway, I'm not your program, so I am here to tell you a little bit about a process that got us to the winner. Her name is Ilya, and she will come to the stage to receive her prize a little bit later on. However, the process was, Logie said to, said to me, look, we want to partner with your school, and we would like to annually hand out a scholarship. So how are you going to make this work? We could do an essay contest, we could do some kind of challenge for students. And so we put the challenge out. Students were asked to write, draw, sing, hop, whatever. Something about black culture, black history. And I have one of the architects of the building, Ms. Sullivan who's standing off to the side, she's coming up. Uh, Ms. Hodges is there hiding with a wave, she says she don't want to come on the stage. So what I'm gonna do is ask Ms. Sullivan to reveal one piece of the work and you can applaud it. And if you're not on the camera, I can't take a picture. But remember say it was, it, it is copyright, idiot. <laughs> So don't go sell it to pick the work. So let's see, let's see which one she brings forward. Oh, she's bringing them both. I would say drum roll, please, but the drummers have... Uh... Oh, by the way, I don't think you celebrated the drummers big and loud enough, so celebrate them now, please. Okay, so this is the work of one of the students in the building. Okay, we know you can't see it from far, but we, we thought we would put it here just as a symbol. And we'll reveal the other one. There are two pieces. One depicts, and we'll get her to tell the story. We won't tell the story for her. Elliot, you wanna just come and Come tell your story, please. Uh, what? What? Oh, no. Just don't just make her walk up so much. Look, clap, no, no, no. So, I will hold the mic for Elia and allow her no, I'm not going to hold it because we're in our picture. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, my name is Ilary Brown, and I'll be presenting a poem and a speech about um, these art pieces and my poem. Chains. The chains of broken pull me, pull me into hate, which decides my painful fate. I am flabbergasted of what I should do, but wait. I can see, I can see the light that shines toward me. The chains are slipping, slipping off my wrist, neck, and legs. No more enslavement of the mind. I can see, for now, I am free. I am as free as free can be. I am as free as the wind blowing through the trees. I am as free as the wind that calms the raging storm. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Nothing shall pull me back anymore, because I am free. Free, I say. of the struggle for freedom. Just like when Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. 
was arrested, I thought that all darkness was covering all hope, all dreams. But then the light of unity and community vanquished all of the negativity. Afrocentric 101 stands for all the people who wanted this school to happen. Our ancestors waited for the birth of this school. And here it is, the Afrocentric school. Our courageous people and supporters were the ones who made this possible to give voice and a place for us. Like our late Elder Dudley Laws, Vicki McPhee, Murphy Brown, Brother Sankofa, and Mrs. Hyman, who was the first principal at the school when it opened. These images, these images. I captured the images of these African Canadians and Americans because of the landmark they have impacted on the world, like Dr. Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, who fought for African rights, equality, and wanted to look beyond of what the white man voiced and believed. African Canadian Viola Desmond was the first Canadian woman to have her face on the $10 bill, which is coming out soon, and like Rosa Parks, refused to give up her seat. And finally, Elder Dudley Laws, an activist for social justice and equality, one of the Canadian men who wanted this school to happen, it, and it has. In his life journey, he treasured the enormous knowledge and wisdom he gained through family, extended family, and community. He was compelled to fight racism. He was involved in many struggles, such as the criminal justice, racial profiling, issues of concern for our Afro-Canadian community and society in general. In his words, I am always grateful and inspired by the teachings, philosophy, and opinions of the Honorable Marcus Garvey. Make no apology for who you are or whence you came. Build upon the past and the future will be brighter. The continuation of this process is now the task of young leaders in which he had confidence, and now I too have that confidence. And like our late Elder Dudley Laws, my hope too is that we will continue to call on knowledge, experience, and the wisdom of those who have traveled the path of leadership. I'm really honored and happy that the Dudley Laws Foundation has been established as a testament of his outstanding contribution. Thank you. Speaking. You are Amelia Brown. Well, it is my distinct pleasure to present this scholarship to you for your academic brilliancy. No. I would urge you to stay in school, continue doing excellent work. And sometime in the future, you're going to be called to give back, just as you are receiving today. What I wanted to ask you is, what are your academic aspirations? Um, you really want to be a yes. yes. I wanted to become a professional artist, and uh, probably a pilot. Who are the persons who are pushing you to climb a 
high as you did? My teachers and my mom. Well, let me offer you my personal congratulations on what you have accomplished today, and that is a scholarship that you have received. So let's step up here.